Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Four red wines in front of me, and uh, is there a common thread? Oh, you should be a... Two of them are made from Carignan. Uh, one of them comes from Chile. Uh, so I've got another Chilean, and I thought, oh, I've been in South America, I'll stick an Argentinian in there anyway. Uh, I'm sure I won't have offended too many people in the process. Uh, I'd better go on with it, hadn't I? First, Carignan. Uh, Alan Grignon, Carignan Vieille Vigne. I don't know how... Actually, it says on how old. Uh, the, uh, the Vieille Vigne are 50 years old. Uh, and uh, it's 2011 Pay de Roux and uh, pretty cheap is it? Um, 7.49 down to 6 quid a bottle uh, if I manage to post this video in time. Licorice and Jammy Dodgers. I can't remember the last time I had a Jammy Dodger biscuit. If you don't know what they are, uh, they're little round, um, two, two, uh, two lots of uh, uh, plain biscuit, one of which has a cutout. Sometimes it's a heart, sometimes it's a circle. Uh, and then in the middle, you've got this uh, slightly artificial jammy filling. Um, and uh, the way to eat them is you bite it all the way around so you've got just biscuit. You've e eaten all the biscuit, then you've just got the jammy bit left, and then you go... And it's got that, uh, yeah, processed jam, cooked, baked smell. Um, I think it's going to be quite fresh, but I'm just concerned that um, that, that, that jammy edge has a little, gone a little bit too far. Interesting thing, though, for, for jamminess, it's just 12.5% alcohol, so um, the jammy dodger may just be leading me up the garden path. I'll stick with the jammy dodger and licorice. Um, get those same sort of characters. Um... Uh, I don't know whether it's a particular way in which they've made it. There is this vanilla softness, which um, I don't think the wine needs. I think that uh, uh, the character of the wine in the first place, it, yeah, it had enough enough spice and spiciness and spiky bits to um, uh, to stand by itself. And there's just this, yeah, what I call this muddy vanilla that's just taking away uh, the freshness. And uh, so I, I don't mind it, but uh, I'd like it without that little bit. Let's see what the next Carignan is going to be like. Uh, we are down in uh, Chile here, and um, quite a bit older, so 2008 vintage. This is Torres Cordillera Carignan, uh, and I think it'll be from Maule. There's a, there's a, uh, in, in recent years, there's a place in, um, is it Cajenes? Uh, in, where they found a lot of old Carignan vines and um, resuscitating them. So there's like an, a national Carignan organisation now uh, of people all gl clubbing together. What you'll often find is that they're all virtually all drawing fruit from the same uh, same few vineyards there because you can't plant old vine Carignan. You can plant young vine Carignan and wait for it to get old, but um, I think some of the vineyards here are 80 years old or so. Yeah, 80 years. More than 80 years old. So let's give it a whirl, see where we get to. And it's typical chili, earthy, reduced blackcurrant pastels. Um, there's um, uh, there's a, there's a more earth, yeah, uh, there's an earthiness behind it. Uh, a bit of violet scent that uh, I always think of uh, violets and uh, carignan going together. Um, blackberries and uh, but yes, it's this this is blackcurrant character. Uh, I'll keep swirling it because some, sometimes with Chilean wines that initial burst of that flavour does blow off and the rest of the wine comes through. Quite rich but dry. There's this really drying tannin that you get in your mouth, uh, an earthy, leathery feel, and um, uh, it's also got um, compared with the first one, which had, had that fresher Carignan edge, despite the jamminess, which I think was from the wine making rather than the fr from the fruit. This has got that um, that overripe Carignan uh, edge of raisins that you get in uh, in some fitu and stuff like that. Um, and um, I like it, but I have a strong feeling that I like a blend of these two. Um, something that that had a bit of the freshness of the, fir the freshness and fruit of the first one, uh, and that uh, soft maturity of the, uh, of the of the second one. It's okay. I prefer it to the uh, to, to the Grignon wine, but um, yeah, N good but not great. Let's see whether we get greatness in wine number three, which is Casa Silva Reserva Carmenere from the Colchagua Valley. Uh, chocolate wafer biscuit oak is one of the first characters I come through uh, get to here. Um, there is a little bit of reduction, not quite that black currenty reduction that I get I get in the first one. Um, and the, here it feels like that sort of reduction that with time open it's going to get uh, that the wine the wine is going to benefit from it. Um, at the moment it's keeping it fresh. Um, the in terms of the carmenerity. Is that a word? It is now. Um, it, what I get coming through is that little bit of um, is that, that slightly green coffee bean character and uh, some of the blackberries, a little bit of that exotic, uh, maybe the hoisin in there, something sweet and sour. Smells good. 
Yeah, there's this earthy uh, green jam. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? Earthy green jam. Uh, the good bit, the earthiness. So you, you, it feels like it's come from a soil. It feels like it's sucked flavours out from the ground. Uh, that toasty oak that I got to, to, to start with, that chocolate wafer biscuit, it's there in the background. Um, and uh, the, the green bit, well, the, what I mean by the green bit is if you over, if you, uh, Carmen Air is one of the, the, the last grapes to ripen and it's, uh, um, it, it can be a struggle to get it to, to, to uh, become fully ripe. However, I see some people in Chile really pushing it and once it's ripe, leaving it there just that little bit too long. Uh, in the process, um, you lose acidity and uh, so the, the, uh, uh, you, you have to add something like some Cabernet Sauvignon or uh, some, uh, add some acidity to, to uh, maintain the freshness. Um, uh, and you also get a little bit of raisining. Here it feels like they've picked it um, ripe but not too ripe and it's just on that, uh, the, there's that it, it's where uh, the green bit is herbal rather than herbaceous so it's not like you feels like you're sucking uh, uh, half and half a piece of celery. Uh, there's this a refreshing quality to it. It's weird it's talking about refreshing in a wine that's 14% uh, alcohol but um, uh, in terms of the fruit flavours they are on that refreshing side. I like it, I think I'm going to like it more tomorrow because uh, it feels like a wine that's really quite closed in and needs to uh, needs to come out of its shell but uh, I do like it. Let's see whether I like the final one. Uh, we are over the Andes in um, Argentina now for Vinalba Malbec Syrah 2010 from uh, Patagonia. I'm presuming it's Rio Negro. Um, yeah, Rio Negro. It's almost a honey type of edge here. Um, I was talking about hoisin on the first one. Here, it um, feels like there's going to be a bit of uh, sweetness, and, and it feels like honey. A um, bit of jam too, um, berry jam, dark berry jam. Um, I... Uh, yeah, that's some spice there too. It's it, it feels like there's the, 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 the there's more wine there that wants to get out but uh, isn't getting out today. Let's see if what happens when you taste it. Highest alcohol here, fourteen and a half percent. I do notice some of that heat coming through. Uh, uh, this baked berry character, the plums, um, berries, some of that slightly shriveled up black currant. Uh, as if they were really pushing to get things right. Uh, I wish they'd get, picked it a bit earlier because um, I'd like a little bit, bit more freshness and veef here. As it is, it's okay. I mean, it's quite, it's quite big flavoured wine, but um, subtlety isn't its forte. But it's not. It, it's pr probably one of the cheapest wine in this lineup. It's okay. Uh, I would say that the Carmen Air was my favourite, and um, but an interesting quartet. I will see you soon. <laughs>